Wow, what a way to start your week, right? I'm gonna tell you, I am excited that you're connecting and I'm glad that you said, you know what, I'm gonna invest into myself today. You are investing into yourself every time you listen to the word of God being spoken, right? Another thing I wanna tell you is that your destiny is connected to your words. Change your words, change your world. You have to change what you're speaking. So this morning, I want you, or this evening, this afternoon, whatever time you're watching this video, I want you to make that decision that you're gonna change your words so that you can see a change in your world, all right? So let's get started right there where you're at. This is the third part and the last part of get a hold of yourself. Yes, get a hold of yourself. Sometimes our emotions control our lives. And we got to flip that around and say, you know what? My life is going to control what I feel because you have to. Sometimes the brain tells the body what to do, but the body's got to start telling the brain what to do. It's opposite, the other way around. We have to start telling ourselves how we feel and stop letting everyone and anything and, and the devil tell us how to feel. Amen. So let's pray right now, right where you're at. Father God, more of you and less of me. In your name, we pray. Amen. All right. So I'm going to start on Romans 7, 15, 18 through 19. It's the same scripture that we're using. Uh, for I do not understand what I am doing, for I'm not practicing what I want to do, but I do the very thing I hate. For I know that good does not dwell in me, this is, in my flesh, for, I, for, the willing, for the willing is present in me, but the doing is not good. For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the evil that I don't want. So basically, and it's, I'm gonna give you a quick recap of all three of all the last two messages. Paul is saying that he's talking about the six cycles, right? That some of us can identify with. What are those self-defeating habits that defeat us? It, it's the emotional pain, and that's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, cravings, addictions. In the middle of all of that, the enemy comes, and guess what? He adds fear, anxiety, worry. He hates, he, he hates when we are, we identify those things and we want to take control of it. So he comes with low self-esteem. He comes with insecurity, self-hate. He wants to run your life through your emotions instead of running your life through what you know and what you know about God and how God is going to push you out of a situation and teach you at the same time to become that stronger person. He, the enemy hates that. He, he wants your emotions to be so jacked up that you literally are put in this straitjacket and you're held captive. And we got to get to the point where we say, you know what, we're not going to be held captive anymore. We're not going to be that puppet for that puppeteer to say how to do it, when to do it, how to say it, what to wear, when to wear, and how to act or maybe act like everybody else. We're called to be God's child, God's chosen, God's royalty priesthood. You might say, you don't know me. You don't know what I've done. How can I be loved by God? God loves you and he's chosen you right there where you're at. He will pick you up. He will be the head lifter. I'm telling you, God is the answer. Jesus is the answer, right? So God wants to set you free from those negative emotions and those six cycles that we're dealing with. But in order to move out of those negative emotions, we have to go past, we have to let go of our yesterday and past, we got to leave it behind. The past is the past. We cannot change it. We got to be willing to say, you know what? See you later. Hasta la vista, mamacita, right? You got to say, ah, no more. You're not going to hurt me. I'm sorry that happened five years ago. I need to cut that chain off. I need to get rid of it. I need to just stop thinking about it, right? Don't let the devil replay a 4D movie in your mind that you stay stuck where you're at. I know some of you may be in this natural world, meaning you have a good reason to be down and discouraged, right? Maybe he cheated in front of you. 
with another woman. Maybe she cheated and you caught him there at that hotel room. Or maybe you had an abortion, you feel horrible about it. I know what well, in the natural, you might be down and discouraged, but don't allow yourself to go there. You have to decide, I am not going to live by how I feel. You gotta go deeper than that and start living with what you know. You have to start living with you know what you know what do we know that God has a greater plan for your life no matter how many mistakes you've made no many how many times you've fallen God has a greater plan for you you know that his power is greater than any other power God's power is greater than any other power so if it's not a power that is of God doesn't make you feel right it's not from God all right so the power of the anointing of God breaks every burden and destroys every yoke. We know that. The anointing is the power of God in any given situation. Well, what is the anointing? It's God Almighty. If you said, Lord, I give you my heart, you surrendered your life to Christ, well, I've backslidden. Well, you can read right now. Just say, Lord, repeat after me. I give you my life. Lord, forgive me take me love me care for me he's saying you know what i've already done all that you've already been forgiven he said i gave my son's life for you if you just pray that i'm telling you the anointing is the power of god in any given situation the anointing stops the process of the enemy working in your life it breaks and looses everything and sets you free so today, if you make that decision and you said, enough, I've had enough, Jacqueline. I'm glad I'm listening to this message. I'm telling you, if you prayed that and if you have not prayed that and you're just logging in, I give you my life, Lord. I give you my life. I surrender it all to you. That anointing is going to loose you and free you. The anointing that God gives us actually creates a fear in the heart of the demonic spirits that have been oppressing you. You're not possessed, but they oppress you. They manipulate how you should feel. They manipulate how you should treat others, and they manipulate how you should treat yourself. But the moment you say, Lord, I give you my heart, the anointing will break and loose you free, and it will put fear in those demonic spirits of depression, oppression, loneliness, rejection, discouragement, uh, whatever it is. Satan doesn't fear. He doesn't fear you. He fears the anointing that flows through you. I want you to hear that. He doesn't fear you. He fears the anointing that flows through you. What is the anointing? It is the Holy Spirit within you, the power of God within you, the word of God that never returns void, that is inside of you. The moment you begin to speak the word of God or you begin to worship, guess what? Devils tremble. They got to go. They can't be there. You got to start opening up your mouth. You might be sitting right there in your living room. You're all alone at home. You're all alone at home. And you're struggling with these mind monsters that are trying to take over you. Start opening your mouth because the anointing is what puts the fear in those demonic spirits. So when you wake up and those negative words, those discouraging, discouraging thoughts and feelings come, you have to shake them off. You have to be done with this roller coaster living. You, you, you weren't born to be a roller coaster. You were born to be, a, yeah, a free spirited person with God, Jesus Christ, within you. Don't give in to your emotions and let them keep you from God's blessing or God's promotion. Let's stop wasting our time. Let's not waste another day. Let's get ready and be prepared to receive God's promises, God's blessings, God's promotions. Today, more than ever, I'm going to tell you, there are many people that are depressed, hurt, angry. They're generally just frustrated. They're having a hard time. You know why? They're, they have a hard time believing the word, receiving the word, and applying the word. And even harder time figuring out why they are struggling with these negative emotions. Some of what we feel, I'm going, to tell, I'm going to share this with you. 
some of the feelings that we are feeling, this negative heaviness or oppression, is a result of a childhood pain or maybe a family history, negative words that were spoken to you. I can personally share with you that I, for many years, struggled, and, I'm not, and, and I've overcome this. That's why I'm able to speak this to you. I struggled with you're not going to be anyone. You're going to be a whore. You're, you're a bastard. Yes, those are the words they use on me when I was six years old. Imagine that. My daughter's six. I cannot even imagine saying those things to a six-year-old, a defenseless person that cannot defend themselves. How do you do that to a six-year-old? Emotional pain, right? Childhood emotional pain. Oh, your mom's depressed, your grandma's depressed, you got schizo, you got this, you got that, and I'm not saying that's what I have. I'm just speaking to whoever's listening. Whatever it is, whatever diagnose you're dealing with, I'm sorry, but you gotta say enough is enough because I'm not gonna let my past family history hinder my future that God already has planned out for me. We cannot be held back by that. I, I'm like, please don't let those things hold you. There's greater things. Can you imagine if the world would just wake up? It would be such a better place to live. I mean, nowadays you get in your car and people just do whatever they want. They pass red lights, they're texting while they're passing, and they're going in 50 miles per hour in a 20-mile zone because they're reckless. They're reckless. But imagine, right? If we say, you know what, I'm not going to be run by my, my, my uh, childhood pain or my family history and the negative things, of, the negative words of my past, then I won't be able to hurt anybody else. But because we live in a selfish world, people don't see it that way. But I'm here to tell you that we have to work on our pain, our pain, our emotions. When we're frustrated, when we're mad, be careful about transferring that to people to hurt people. Did you mean it? Probably not. But did you need to release it? Probably yes. But we can't release it just on anyone, especially a stranger that's driving down the street with their baby in their car seat. And because you're road raging, you just want to be shooting your gun everywhere and you, you shoot a little boy. I mean, is that fair? No, it's not fair. So let's learn to transfer our emotions to God and say, God, deal with them. Deal with them, Lord, because I don't want to hurt anybody else. Right? You got to get to that point. So, so some... I'm going to tell you, every day that you have, you have to make a decision on whose words you're going to give attention to. Are you going to give word, attention to God's word, or you're going to give more attention to the enemy's words? Because God's word is the truth, but the enemy's words is a lie. There's lies. He just spews lies everywhere. And when you give attention to the enemy's suggestions or instructions, you become influenced by negative thinking, which leads to negative emotions, and it opposes the word of God. That's a decision. You gotta, you gotta get to the point where you notice those things. Who, who am I gonna pay attention to? Now, emotions. What are emotions? Let's get to the definition, which I should have given you this at the first, first of it, but that's okay. We're gonna give it to you now before we end this message. Emotions are feelings on the inside caused by pain, or pleasure that are trying to move you in a certain direction. So I want you to think about this. Think of your emotions as a steering wheel of your life. They determine the direction you're going to go. Okay? It's a steering wheel. When you have negative emotions, they're going to lead you in a negative direction. When you have a positive emotions, it's going to lead you in the good direction. Another way that I want to talk about, these emotions can lead you to the direction that God desires you to go, but at the same time, the negative emotions will cause you to fall. However, positive emotions will cause you to prosper. So you've got to make that choice. Do you want to fall or you want to prosper? You want the negative or you want the positive? For a long time, believers, believers and people have thought that emotions were bad. No. There's good emotions and bad emotions. The last two messages and this message, I've been only dealing with the bad emotions that we deal with. But there are good emotions, depending on how you use them, okay? So I'm going to use this example with your emotions. Let's so think about fire, okay? When you use fire properly, guess what? It can be a blessing, right? 
I mean, we went through the snow blizz, didn't we? Didn't we wish we all had fire when our lights were off and we had no water? Fire can be used as a blessing if we use it properly, right? It can heat up our homes, cook our food, and even use as a purifier to boil dirty water. Remember, for a good week, we couldn't even use water. It can boil water to purify. That's what fire can do. But if it's used inappropriately, fire can light up your house and destroy your whole home all the way to its foundation. And believe me, if your foundation is not strong, it's going to burn it all the way to the ground. If your house is shaking and shivering right now, then it's going to burn it all the way to the ground, all the way down to the post, if your house is standing on post, right? But you got to understand, you can have good emotions and bad emotions. You just need to know how you're going to use it the proper way. So in the same way with your emotions, how we, how we use them determines whether they're good or bad. I've always said that getting the proper understanding is the most important for building a successful life. What if I've told y'all before? Whatever you're dealing with, that's what you read on. If you're dealing with depression, you get books. You read the Bible. Joyce Meyer has great books, right? I'm giving her credit. She's got great books on depression, anxiety, worry, all of those, right? My favorite book that, that I, I can tell you I've read is Never Lose Heart. Those are things that if you're dealing with, you study, how did I get it, how did I get there, and how can I get out, right? You have to use, you all, I always say that, get the proper understanding of what you're going through. Study it in order for you to become stronger and understand why you're dealing with it, okay? So emotions are from God. In fact, they're a vital part of worship. If you're in church service and we have a full-blown church worship experience with music, drums, uh, piano, and everything, guess what? When you're worshiping God with all your heart, those are your emotions that you're being able to just release yourself in worship, that you lose yourself in his presence, and his presence, you receive what? Peace. I mean, I don't think I've ever experienced where I'm worshiping God with anger. Oh my God, Lord, I worship you. And you're like, I'm going to kill him. I mean, you can't worship and be hating at the same time. So when you start to worship, though, that's a form of good emotions because you're expressing your adoration. You're communicating to God. So worship is a good thing. That's a good emotion that you want to have. God wants your emotions to be whole. So you're not only free to worship him, but you're touched by what he's touched. You're moved by what he's moved by, and you're able to love as he loves. That's, what you're, that's the emotions that God gives. God gave those emotions to us, and he wants our emotions to be sound, not bruised, and unable to use. He wants to use you with the good emotions, right? Where you do good, where you're edifying and and adding to people and valuing people's lives and appreciating their lives and even to yourself speaking to yourself good right he wants those emotions so we got to make a decision that you're not going to allow the negative emotions to hinder you right from getting to the place where god wants you instead i want you to say you know what i'm gonna make a choice today make that choice today to live the day each day in God's peace and deciding that you're going to have a great day. So let's back up as I get ready to close. Watching these videos, whether it's my husband, myself, podcast, whatever it is, always see it as an investment. Invest into you. No one is ever going to invest into making a stronger you, only you. My husband and I, we study, we give the message, we invest our time into putting good things into you and your spirit so that you become that stronger person, that your heart will be fully blown and in love with Jesus Christ, right? And knowing that God is there for you, but you have to invest into yourself. I want you to still continue to stay connected.
We want you to, to share this content if you have not shared it yet. Get the message out, right? Do not be ashamed. What are they gonna think about? I don't live a right life, should I really share this? Yes, share it, that's okay. That's okay, share the content. We gotta get the message out. And you continue to connect with us and grow. So let's pray right there where you're at. Father God, I need you, I'm weak, you're strong, you're my source, and that's why I'm asking for you. All right, so new week, new you, be empowered, be engaged, stay connected, love God, love people, serve others, and change the world. You know, since the beginning of serving God, I decided to be a God dispenser with no hesitation. I've never had a problem with being obedient to giving back what belongs to God. I read this book from Don Ostrom, and he put a scripture in there in Isaiah 119. It says, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. He also wrote, um, obedience is always the first step to God. Without taking the first step, you will never start your journey uh, into the life of abundance. So today, as you give, we speak abundance and overflowing in your homes and in your lives and in your families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.